plucky Lynn. Scott, what you doing? I'm going out delivering the papers. Oh, well, it'd be a good idea to take them with you then, wouldn't it? Hmm? Robert, you have to go. Don't. Not going. You love school. What's the matter? Has somebody said something? Had an argument? No, and I'm not going. Hey, it's the paper cut. It's on the side. Now, Daddy's here. Now. Well, that's not ours. Scott delivered the wrong one. Jack, talk to Robert. <sighs> What's the matter, son? Please don't make me go to school, Dad. Well, what's up? Are you poorly or something? No. Well, then why don't you want to go to school? Come and tell me. The gym at school. Yeah. Some boys. I knew it. They said it was haunted because they put the people in there when the plane crashed. You know they're being silly. I know, but I don't want to do PE because I keep thinking about them. Oh. Look, if I come to school with you and explain to your teacher, will that help? Look, come on, then. Get upstairs. Give your face a wash. Hey, give me a smile. <laughs> That's better. It's a nightmare. When's it going to end? Yeah, but you don't realise how much it affects everything until it happens. There's Robert, frightened to death of going to school. Ma lying in a hospital bed. Joe's gone to visit her. He's not going to give up, is he? He keeps saying, where there's life, there's hope. At moments like this, it's hard to see any hope. Hello, Ma. It's me, Joe. I thought you'd like to know that I'm back working with Jack again on the farm. Yeah, just like the old days. Him and me, side by side. Oh, I expect we'll end up at each other's throats, as per usual. What are these? Hyacinth. I know you like the scent. Ma? Do you miss him, Ma? Where does this come from? Oh, Scott Windsor, I suppose. Oh, where's the Times? I don't know. Making amazing progress with the club at the Holiday Village. Got the cesspit in since the weekend. Got to think of a name for it, though. Country club's not right. Wrong image. Wrong size. Kim? Mm. Is everything OK? Not really. They're only offering you 75%? That's all I'm covered for. The estimated cost at the time the stables were built, which is now well below today's market value. And I'm underinsured on the horses. Gonna have to pay the owners quite a lot of it. That's crazy. You don't have to pay them, you know. I know, but I feel honour bound. Oh, hell. Oh, well. Having made my bed, I now must lie in it. What are you looking for? Rice. Here we are. Rice. Uh, no, basmati rice. This is pudding rice. What's the difference? About half an hour in our house. What? Between courses. Well, I could get some in for you. Do you use a lot of it, do you? Uh, no idea. Well, you know, once a month, twice a month, more than twice a month. Vic, it's not pestering. I'm just trying to do me a bit as chief provider of the community's needs. Oh, we're not. The superstore in Hotney's. Only for the minute, my love. Only for the minute. How are the kids? I mean, since... Well, Scott's been... It's fine. They're all fine. I mean, they've got, had a few nightmares, but then who hasn't? What'd you ask? Oh, Robert, a bit of trouble getting him to school this morning. We'll do him an ice rice pudding, then. Cheer him up. He <laughs> doesn't give up, does he? Morning, all. Oh, look. It's plucky, appealing Lynn. Who, uh, can have a look? Oh, yes. Leads our nationwide appeal for funds to rebuild shattered Beckendale. He gets her picture all over the papers. Just so happens to be doing a turn for Gavin the Reptile, a reporter boyfriend. Mere coincidence? Not much choice in here, is there? Not cards or men? Both.
Well, that's the way to get the old tool ringing, Vic. A uh, custom we can do without. Here, Viv, pass me the calculator and my gun. What gun? What are you on about? My price ticket gun. Oh, hello, sir. Hi. Where's your Jack? I came up earlier, couldn't find him. He's in the top field with the man from the Soil Association, trying to decide how much contaminated topsoil's got to come off. Started already. Well, Jack thinks the sooner we get on with life, the better, as far as we can. He's right. The cost of it all's still a worry. Um, have you had a chance to talk with the man from Hot and Waste about them footing the bill for clearing the toxic pit? Well, he's put it to his board. We're just waiting on what they decide. Fingers crossed, then. Just had another phone call. More wrong newspapers. Oh, he must have been in a total days this morning. We ought to have a proper paper boy. We can't afford one. Is this legal? Of course. Are you sure? I'm not. In any case, it doesn't seem right. Viv. Vivi. Vivian. I've just increased our turnover by 15% at a stroke. And we don't have to sell any more than we do already. Vic, Vicky, Victor. We're not selling anything at the moment. And you won't need a calculator to tell you what 15% of that is. Oh, ye of little faith. Oh. I knew there was something else. Got delivered the wrong newspapers this morning. Can you change them for me? Yeah, sure. Uh, Yorkshire Post, Guardian and Mail. Yeah. Oh, and I'll take that pudding rice one here. 75? This was only 65 pence just now. Yeah, well, it's gone up. Just. See, if you'd have bought it a few minutes ago. <laughs> Who's that? He's a bloke from the Soil Association. Come to tell us what to do with this field. Because it was contaminated with aviation fuel. Yeah, you can still smell it. I reckon we ought to have waited a while. Well, maybe, but Jack wanted to get cracking. Well, that's my brother all over. Can't let the grass grow under his feet. He'd be lucky if he gets any to grow, Peter. Michael, where are the flasks Sarah gave us? They're over there where you left them. Uh, do us a favour, get them for us, will you? Yeah, yeah. Well, how was Ma? No change, nothing. You didn't expect there would be, did you? I don't know, Jack. I was hoping, praying something will happen. It's not likely, Joe. The doctors have yeah, said... Yeah, I know! We just can't give up on her. I'm not. I'm just... facing reality. Where does life as hope? Well, that's what you keep saying. In Ma's case, it may not be. Oh. This is where you're hiding your son, is it? Now then, Nick. I've had it done. Me prostrate. Doctor said I have to take it easy, but that's easier said than done in this place. Six o'clock this morning, they had milk for me breakfast. They had me out a bit day after operation. In old days, they'd have sent me away to the seaside to a convalescent home for a fortnight. He said I can go home tomorrow. Maybe somebody from Willie's will come and pick me up. I was about to get back to my pints again. Hey, you'll never believe this. Alan Turner's going to get wet to that, surely. She'll need a booster in six months. The receptions will sort it out for you. Yeah. Paul, I haven't got a minute of you. Not really. Off to Connellton. Mayor with an eminent fool. What is it? Um, there's a meeting of the partners this evening, isn't there? That's right. I've got an idea I'd like you all to consider. Oh, yeah. Expanding the practice. Opening another office in Beckendale. Go on. Well, what I had in mind was a satellite office with myself and an assistant to cover all the work in that area. You think there's enough being generated to make it viable? Oh, yes. I mean, well, quite apart from the last few horrendous weeks, the village is growing. There's even a doctor's practice now. Hmm. Paul, 
I spend a good 75% of my time in my own neighbourhood these days. It would cut down on the time I spend travelling, and I could use that time to make more calls. What about financial commitment? What do you mean? Are you prepared to find the money to finance this yourself? Yes, I am. If she hadn't blurted it out like that, I, I could have coped with it in my own way. But now she's gone public. And how? She she's forced the issue. Oh, dear. I if only I'd stopped to think about it. And poor Shirley, she she she's going to be so upset. I really need to do this. I'm determined I can make it work. Maybe what we should do is finance the bricks and mortar, pay the rent, and have you in there as a partner. Really? Hmm. That'd still require a financial commitment on your part, but we'd be bearing the burden of the premises. Well, how much would I have to put in? I can't say for sure. I need to talk to the others about it. It could be in the region of 30,000. I see. Could you run to that? Yes, if I have to. Good. Well, I think it's a great idea. I'll have to put it to the other partners now. Do you think they'll go for it? If you can convince me, I'm sure I can convince them. Well, does he like milk or plain? How do you know they're for a he? Well, he wouldn't be making all this fuss for a woman. <laughs> they're for Alan. What a surprise. <sighs> Look, wouldn't it be kinder not to buy them? I mean, think about his waistline. Some of us happen to find the portly male a turn on, Vic. I think I'll take these then. Right. How much are they? Uh, four sixty. Hey, hang about. This other ticket says four pounds. Yeah, well, it's all gone up today. Fifteen percent across the board. Well, you can't do that. Yes, I can. If I choose to sell those chocolate at their full price, I'm quite at liberty to do so. Oh, well, in that case, I'm quite at liberty to tell you to stuff them. So you can. Hard centres and all. I didn't know you read this. I don't. It was delivered by mistake. I wouldn't pay for that rubbish. I mean, have you seen it? It's a joke. Plucky Lynn. What's she got to be so plucky about? She's lost a flipping house, that's all. Any news of Seth? Oh, yes, he had his off at the weekend. He'll be back tomorrow. They're in and out in no time these days. At least they'll be coming back. Yeah. Well, I'd better be off. I want to catch Frank to it. I haven't seen him lately. Have you got problems? It depends. If he wants us out of the cottage, then yeah, I've got a big problem. If not, no. Hello, Michael. Uh, put that in the rubbish bin, will you please, Mr. Turner? What do you have? Uh, gin and tonic, please. Tar and a large V18. No ice. We'll share the bottle of tonic. Thought you might like to know Frank and I are setting the date for the opening of Lynn's place. What? The country club. We've been trying to dream up a name for it. That was Gavin's idea. Lynn's place. What do you think? I should think that will turn away more people than it will attract at the moment. He's worried about all the customers he's going to lose. <laughs> I'm not particularly worried about them. Anyway, whatever we decide to call it, we're just a couple of weeks away from the major event in our social calendar. Well, yeah. then you've got your own little event coming up, haven't you? Where is the wedding happening? Have you decided yet? My wedding, if it happens, is no business of yours. If? Hello. <laughs> Slight doubt there. Feet getting cold. Excuse me, ma'am. This is what I like to see, the Dunkirk spirit. You what? I remember all those picture post photographs of damaged buildings while the boys are at the front fighting, fucking, and country gallant little England carries on. Well, I'm glad you find this so entertaining. But then, other people's misery is your business, isn't it? Oh, well, listen, I was in the shop earlier, right, buying some chocolates. And you know what Vic's done? He's put his prices up 15% all round. I mean, can he do that? Yes, he can, but it's not very good for business. Oh, some chocolates for? Oh, just some bloke I know. I thought I'd give him a treat. Oh, you are sweet. Thank you. Well, what makes you think I was talking about you? Well, you were, weren't you? Of course I was daft dead. <laughs> well, no sign of doubt there. But uh, what about the groom? He did say if the wedding takes place, didn't he, Lynn? Definitely, Gavin. If. It's a hell of a lot of money, I know. It's also a brilliant opportunity, Zoe. And the idea of not traipsing across the county every day really appeals. I suppose I could try for a business loan. 
Could ask your father. No, it's time I stood on my own two feet. And if I can't get it off the ground myself, I am not going running to Dad. <laughs> Besides... You want a bit of independence? Yes. It's Cassie, Fern. Oh, uh, no. I wondered if she wanted me to take something over for Christopher. Dad, I've been talking to Paul Worsley about setting up a new branch office in this area. And? Well, he thinks it's a very good idea. It means me becoming a partner. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, only it does mean me putting in a lot of money myself. About 30,000. That's a hell of a big gamble. No, I don't think so. There's plenty of work. It's what I'm doing now, and I'll be getting a better share. What do you think? Well, I don't know. You seem to be all right as you are. Money's good, it's guaranteed. Why take the chance? In any case, though, I wouldn't finance it. I'm not asking you to. There are other sources. <laughs> oh, yeah? Where? Me. The insurance company are just about to pay for the stables. But you're going to need that to start again. Not all of it. Not now you're carrying most of the start-up costs. Kim, there There's are no other... There's no point in arguing, Frank. Oh, it's your money. Exactly. So there may be some money available to invest in Zoe. Look, I've got a meeting with Lynn. Before you get too excited, let's sit down and talk about it properly, eh? I know what I'm doing. And me. That money won't stretch forever. You're going to need some of it to start the stables at the Heritage Farm. So please, let's keep our feet on the ground and talk about it first. Huh? All three of us. Yes, all right. Yeah, I'll make sure it doesn't happen again, Mrs. Young. I feel a lot more sympathetic if she paid her paper bill. In fact, if everybody paid their paper bill. I don't know, he must have done the rounds in a trance this morning. Where is he, anyway? He's not back from school yet. Oh, Mum, please, can I go? For the last time, Kelly, no. It's only a school disco. It's going to be swarming with staff. I want you home, here with us. End of argument. And get on with what your father's asked you to do. And make sure you get all the old labels off. I don't want anyone else moaning at me because of the prices. They're still going to moan, Dad. They're still going to go to Hotton to the supermarket. Well, I'll start a campaign then. Use it or lose it. If you want to hang on to your local post office, start supporting it. Don't see how putting prices up will make you do it. Oi! What? Was that some sort of joke of yours this morning? Hmm? Getting all the papers mixed up was a joke, yeah? I don't know what you're talking about. Why is late from school? It's been home hours. Well, I was... I was... I was at gym club. You don't go to gym club. Well, I did today. He's been wandering around like a zombie for days. What's got into him? Well, you know what's got into him. The crash. Maybe we should take him to see somebody. He'll be fine. He just needs to be here with us. I mean, as long as we're all together, we'll be OK. OK? You got on all right today, then? We didn't do PE anyway. And Mum had a word with the teachers. She told us by not to be so silly. Quite right. And you have been very brave these last few weeks. I'm proud of you, son. Thanks, Dad. Come on. Hi. Hello, love. Are you not going to see Ma tonight? No. I thought you and Sarah were. Uh, well, the thing is, Joe, I'm knackered. And Sarah should be taking it easy, what with the baby coming and all, and, well, it's not as if she knows we're there. Robert, why don't we go upstairs and get you out these school things? We can't just abandon Ma now. It's one night, Joe, that's all. Just one flipping night! When you think of Ma, what do you see in here? A piece of human wreckage strapped to a machine that just might be keeping her alive. Or Ma, her usual cantankerous, interfering, proud, wonderful self, eh? What do you see? You know what I see. Well, me too. And that's the way I want to remember her. I can't stand to see her like this. I don't think Ma's ever going to come home. Jack, I was with her the whole night. The awful bloody night, the plane came down. I was with her, talking to her, hanging on to her, not letting her go. Now, I got her through that, so I'll get her through this. Joe, please. Now, look, I've already got Mark's death on my conscience. 
I'm not going to have Mars as well. So if you don't mind, I'm going to visit her. Do you think it's the wrong time to be opening this club? Well, it doesn't make a lot of difference to me. The last thing Lynn Whiteley worries about is other people's feelings. Mm, that's true enough. But the more I think about it, the more I think it's the wrong thing to do. But she's so determined, that woman. Is everything OK? Well, let's put it this way. Everything's OK with me, and I thought everything was OK with you. But obviously, I was wrong. I'm sorry? So am I. Very sorry. Well, a fracture of the vertebrae caused damage to the spinal cord, which is what causes the paralysis. I know all this, Mr. Tate. I'm trying to make you understand precisely what has happened to Chris's back and what it means. Despite what you've been told, a lesion to the spinal cord cannot be repaired. But it will heal. Eventually. No. I'm afraid it won't. Are you telling me that my son would be like this for the rest of his life? I'm sorry you were given the impression that the back would get better by itself. But you said yourself that you wouldn't know the whole picture until the other injuries heal. Yes, but experience in other cases. I'm not interested in other cases. I'm talking about my son. So let's wait until he's better before we write him off. Eh? So what's the matter? Oh, come on. You're talking to everybody else about it. How come you can't tell me? After all, I'm the one you were supposed to be marrying. Cheers. Well, we are getting married, aren't we? Look, I heard what you said to Michael. The more I think about it, the more I feel I'm doing the wrong thing. But she's so determined, that woman. I meant Lynn Whiteley and the opening of her damn club. What? I, I just thought it was being a bit insensitive at this time. Oh. Now, that's what gave me second thoughts about our wedding. Yeah. I see. You see, I, I went to see Bernard McAllister earlier. Now, I want you to have the biggest, most lavish, most wonderful wedding possible. I'm anxious about it. So I asked him, is it right for us to enjoy ourselves at a time when there's so much tragedy? Well, what did he say? He said he thought it was, that in fact it was a good thing. Oh, you! Why didn't you ask me? I could have told you that. I'm sorry, it was an oversight. Oh, Alan, listen, I, I don't really want a big church to. I just want to do it quietly in a registry office. I did want you to have a wedding day to remember. Well, if you want to make a big posh do afterwards. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I do love you. I should hope so. Would one of you lovebirds care to serve me with a pint? <laughs> Certainly. <clears throat> now then, I'm afraid that will be £1.48. How much? Well, um, the price has just gone up to you by 15%. Uh, 